Welcome back to the Trader Smith. Today we're going to talk about my number one recommended Trader accessory. We'll probably talk about a few others, but in my opinion, there's one that is most important. So stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll talk about number one. Let's get to it. And coming in at number 48. Just kidding, there's only a few. But I think this is very important. On these, they're not in any particular order, but a good coupler lock is important. This is for a two inch or two and five sixteenths coupler. It will even fit the old inch and seven eighths balls as well. Uh, my opinion, uh, this is a hard one to take off. A thief can still get it off of there um, if he wants to, but just make him work for it. He's got to have something cordless. Um, it is hard to knock off with a hammer, uh, but this is a good one. We'll leave a link to this one below, but secure your trader. In our area, area, trader theft is pretty bad. They'll get a trader, they'll take it, grind the numbers, then try to sell it back into the used market um, as a bill of sale trader only. Um, if you see those type of traders used, beware of bill of sale only. Ask for title or MSO in that. Let's move on to the next one. While we're on the subject of couplers, maybe you bought yourself a gooseneck instead of a bumper pull. In that case, you would need a gooseneck coupler lock. Uh, this is a good brand. It fits most all of your Bulldog style couplers and a lot of the imports. I'll hold it up there so you can see the number on that. Make sure your treader stays at home where it's supposed to. Don't, don't let them thieves get it easy. Make them work for it. And just remember, after purchasing a treader, you're gonna need to get strapped. Easy there. We're just talking about cargo securement. Get strapped with some straps. This is a good two inch flat hook style strap that will fit through the stake pocket and secure your load properly. And another accessory I've started using quite a bit uh, for securing your cargo is this stake pocket drop in. So you can put this in your stake pocket pin it in and it gives you a D-ring. So if you're hooking your know, motorcycle on here or something that you're not gonna use a one inch strap, um, I really like this. You can use this on bumper pulls, goosenecks. As long as it's got a stake pocket, um, it's good for that. And speaking of needing a one inch strap to go in your newly installed stake pocket D-ring accessory, you gotta get you some one inch straps. There is a ton of different ones out there. I like this one, it's got the cute little handle on there. Maybe it's easier for you to use, it's easier for me to use. Really like this one. Not a big fan of the tension straps. I like the ratcheting straps myself, but this can be used a whole four-wheeler, motorcycle, um, anything where you just need a smaller hook. And maybe you have a couple different treaders. Maybe you're pulling a bumper pull utility. Maybe you have a livestock treader. Maybe you have a couple different ball sizes. In that case, I would recommend B&W Toe and Stow. Two and five sixteenths ball, two inch ball. You can flip it over. When not in use, you can flip this underneath so you don't knock your shin off. Comes in multiple drops. They even make it for the double uh, step tailgate on the Chevrolets. They make a special one for that. Two inch, two and a half inch, and three inch receivers. These are not cheap. They're a great product. I've been running one on my personal vehicle for years. Same thing on our shop trucks. If you do invest in one of these, and this is an investment, if you're only pulling one trailer, the same truck all the time, you probably don't need this, so don't waste your money. But if this is a need, get you something to secure it because some goofball is gonna come along and take this off and try to go sell it for $10. They come in here all the time and say, hey, I found this BMW hitch on the street. How much you give me for it? I'm gonna give you a nod on your head one of these days. I don't give them nothing for it because they didn't find it on the side of the street, stole it out of somebody's receiver hitch. So lock that dude up so somebody doesn't walk off with it. How many of you have a buddy that says, hey man, I can weld that? Well, in that case, I almost forgot these bad boys. If you have a buddy or a brother-in-law that can weld, if for nothing else, this is a good way to test them. You can weld these on your top rail. If you have specialty towing needs or securement needs, they can be welded down here, depending on the way your treader is set up. You can also weld them here. If you find out that your buddy or brother-in-law can't weld, it's okay. Maybe he owns a drill. You can get the same thing in a flange mount that could be bolted through the floor. It could be bolted through anything right there and you won't have to worry about his welding capabilities. And remember, most if not all of these items will be in the description below. We'll leave a link so hopefully you can find it if you need one. Another great accessory if your trailer didn't come with it or if you have an older trailer that maybe you're wanting to upgrade is LED lighting. This trailer fortunately comes standard with LED lights, but if you've got the old incandescent, maybe they're burnt out, I would uh, recommend at least putting everything on the tailboard in LED just so the rest of the motoring traveling public can see when your headlights are on, your turn signals, or when you hit the brakes. Um, any more LEDs are pretty affordable. A lot of them, like this brand here, has a lifetime warranty, so if the diodes burn out, 
You can just go ahead and change that dude for a new one and it will just lighten up your treader. So think about putting some LED lights on it. Maybe you bought yourself a tandem axle like this and you have a flat tire. Well, you're in luck. They make something that's pretty cool. It's the Easy Jack 100. This works in a couple different ways. You can use it as a wheel chop like that, either direction. But if you have a flat on one of these tandems, you put it underneath your tire like that and you pull forward and it will actually rock the trailer up on there and lift it off so you can change a tire without having a jack, put your tire on, then you can take it back off. You can put it on the rear axle as well and just put it in reverse and it will jack it up. When these first come out, I thought, man, this is kind of pointless. I've used it a couple of times and we sell a lot of them. So I will say that I've actually used this in the field. Um, we've used it, we keep one in our shop truck. If we're taking a trailer down the road, they're pretty handy. It's better to have it, not need it, than need it and not have it. Ain't that what they say? Ain't that what your grandpa used to say? My grandpa didn't quite say it like that. We can't discuss how he said it, but get you an easy jack. And remember when buying a new treader, if you don't know about tightening your lug nuts, check out the video. We'll leave that somewhere around here about tighten your lug nuts, making sure your wheels don't come off. The manufacturers are going to recommend that after you purchase your trailer new, you tighten them in, I believe, 25, 75, and about 150, somewhere along there. So something that would help you out is a torque stick rated for your lug nut. You can get a socket. Maybe you've already got the socket. This goes onto an electric impact or an air impact. You put it on here. When you go to tighten, it will stop. It will not over tighten the lug nut. It's an easy way to check them. I have a lot of RVers that have a electric impacts, a cordless, you can get those. You can buy expensive Milwaukee, or you can get some that are cheaper. That's what they check their tires when they're on the road. And if they have, to have, they have a flat, they can just use that and you can get it to the proper torque. We'll leave a link to this. There's several different setups depending on the required torque for your wheel. And now for number two, you need a straw hat. If you're gonna be out in the sun, it's getting sunny weather. Get, I'm just kidding. Without further ado, drum roll please. Let's show you my number one, let me tell you, number one recommended trailer accessory. And that is my friend, the infamous spare tire. I cannot tell you how many times that we sell a trailer and nobody wants to buy a spare tire. These guys just stay out in the tire barn all alone. Nobody wants to check the air in them. Nobody wants one of these until they're stuck on the side of the road between here and nowhere and they've had to call roadside assistance and they had to pay $400 to bring out a Maypop to stick on your trailer. If you buy a trailer before you buy any of the rest of this stuff, before you go out and buy any junk or anything like that, make sure if your trailer does not come with it and most bumper pulls don't, get you a spare tire and get you a decent spare tire. Yes, it may set up on this trailer and it may dry rot before you use it, but I'm gonna tell you what, when you have a flat and you're on the side of the road and you get that easy jack out to jack your trailer up and you say, you know what? I got the easy jack, but most importantly, I got a spare tire so I can put my tire on and I can get to town and I'm not stuck on the side of the road and everybody yelling at me saying, hey, you could have just spent the 150 or 160 bucks and got a spare tire and we'd be down the road. But oh no, you saved that 150 to spend 400 down the road. Get the spare tire. And when you put the spare tire on, what are you gonna do? Check the lug nuts. See you next time.